implementation planning and having a realistic plan is one of the most important steps in a digital transformation process. However, most organizations and even consultants get the implementation planning piece of this wrong. Why is that? What do organizations do wrong and how can we create a realistic project plan? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And in our experience as digital transformation consultants, we can make a pretty strong argument that the most important part of any digital transformation is the implementation planning phase. It's that step after you've chosen the technology or technologies you're going to deploy, but it's the step before you actually start deploying. The problem is too many organizations sort of gloss over that step and just jump right into deploying stuff without having taken the time to make sure that they've got a realistic project plan. And like I said at the beginning of this video, more often than not, organizations have unrealistic expectations around their implementation plans. They take too long, they cost too much, they don't deliver the business value that's expected. And quite frankly, this is a big part of why so many digital transformations fail. So what I want to do today is talk about some of the things to be aware of as you go through your implementation plan and also provide you some guidance and tips on how to create a realistic implementation plan that's actually manageable. Now, for more information about implementation planning and other best practices related to digital transformation, I encourage you to download our ebook called Lessons from a Thousand Digital Transformations. And this provides 20 lessons and best practices that we learned by helping all these different organizations throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys, not just in terms of the implementation planning, but also the execution and the strategy behind it as well. So be sure to check out the link in the description field below to download that book, as well as other resources that I've included as well. Now, when putting together an implementation plan, one of the first things you can do that's very effective is to look at implementation benchmarks. I'm not talking about anecdotal examples of an example here or there, or that one company that did something one time. I'm talking about a subset of data that looks at broad cross sections of organizations that have been through digital transformations. And I'm gonna share with you a few of those best practices, which by the way, you can find these benchmarks in our digital transformation report. I'm going to include a link to that in the description field below. So be sure to check that out because that digital transformation report has benchmarks and metrics around what the average implementation looks like. So I'm going to share a few of those with you here today, but you can get more of them in the book that you can download below. So let's look at what some of the benchmarks are. And this is data that we've gathered and been studying for years now. In fact, over 10 years, we've been capturing and recording this data, really studying and understanding the industry. These are benchmarks that are not best practice necessarily. They're not necessarily best case scenarios, but it's the average. It's what happens in the average organization, how much time and money they spend on their transformations. Reason this is so important is because if we have these benchmarks, we can use this as sort of a gut check to see if we're in the ballpark of what the average organization experiences. So the first thing is if we look at implementation timeline, the average implementation for any sort of ERP project or digital transformation is typically 18 months. And again, this is an average. So a large multinational organization is probably going to take three to four years or more. A smaller to mid-sized organization might only take nine to 12 months. But the average for organizations across the globe, across industries, across different sizes is 18 months. The average implementation cost, there's two different ways to look at it. I'll share with you two different metrics here. One is two to three percent of company revenue or your annual turnover however you describe it, is spent on a transformation. Sometimes this is, can be as high as 3 to 4% for a smaller organization because you have less scale, less economies of scale with the cost, the way it's distributed. But the average is somewhere between 2 and 3% of annual revenue. So another way to look at this is if you're a $100 million company, you're likely to spend 2 to $3 million total on your total cost of ownership for your transformation. Again, some organizations are going to be higher than that. Some are going to be lower. A lot of it depends on scope. A lot of it depends on the complexity of your business. A lot of it depends on where you're moving from today versus where you're headed in the future. A lot of different variables can factor into this. But again, this is meant to give you a ballpark of what the average looks like. Another average cost metric that you can look at that can be very helpful is to look at three to four times your technology cost. So in other words, whatever you're spending on software, 
take three to four times that, and that's typically your total cost of ownership. Now this metric, keep in mind, we've been doing this for 10, 12 years or more that we've been studying this data. This has been a pretty steady metric, but one thing that's changing is the subscription model that most vendors are moving towards is throwing this number off. This was actually largely based on the, the old on-prem model. So what you need to do is, in some cases, translate the subscription model into what it would be in an on-premise situation and multiply it by three to four times, and that'll give you your total cost of ownership that may be spread out over multiple years, but that's gonna be the total cost that most organizations are investing in their technology. And then just one other metric I'll share that's just worth noting, it doesn't necessarily affect your implementation plan itself, but it should affect your understanding of what risks you face by not having a solid implementation plan is the fact that somewhere between 50 to 52% of organizations that go through a digital transformation have some sort of material operational disruption. And that's really important. I'm gonna clarify that here, that this is a material disruption to their operations at the time of go live. This means that it wasn't just a little bit trickier than normal, or they had some learning curve issues or growing pains to get used to the software. These are major disruptions, like they couldn't ship product, couldn't close the books, couldn't run payroll, something of that nature, ranging from anywhere from two to four weeks onto several months, depending on how significant the disruption was. So that's something to be aware of as well, is you wanna have a solid implementation plan so that you're mitigating risk and doing things in a way that doesn't lead you to, into the path of being one of these 50 to 52% of organizations that have a material operational disruption. So these are some benchmarks that you can use as a starting point just to get a view of a back of the envelope number of what your implementation duration and cost might be. And what we typically do with clients is we'll take these metrics and we'll apply them or move them up or down depending on complexity, size, industry, technology they're deploying, all these different things that factor in, but at least gives you a starting point on what your overall duration might be. So in addition to these metrics here, the next step I typically recommend is now you look at what does the implementation itself actually look like? And I'm gonna sketch out what a software vendor will typically tell you what an implementation is gonna look like, what some of the major steps are. And then I'm gonna talk about what the other things are that can typically extend that duration. So let's start with what the software vendors are typically going to suggest or propose to you as an organization. Typically, they're going to suggest a process where you'll have your, it's called design and requirements phase. That's usually a first phase of a project. And I'm not gonna get into the whole waterfall versus agile discussion here because that's a whole nother conversation. Another video that I've got on my YouTube channel covers that in more detail. I'm gonna act as though this is sort of a hybrid approach. We're gonna do sort of waterfall, sort of agile, and let's figure out what that duration looks like and how it's gonna apply to you. So design requirements typically happens early on. Then you have your, your software build, which is usually the next phase. Then you have test, um, then you have training, and then that leads you to go live way over here. So let's assume here, I'm gonna take this average over here, let's assume that this proposal you get from your software vendor is that we can do this implementation here in 18 months. So we've got an 18 month process right here according to your, to your vendor. And again, that number is gonna vary. You, you probably have a proposal that has a different number. We see some clients that get proposals as low as three months, some that are as high as three to four years. So it really just depends, but most of the time, it's safe to assume that your software vendor is gonna be underestimating, not because they're bad people or they don't know what they're doing, but as we'll talk about in a minute, because there's a lot of stuff missing from the overall project right here, or the overall project plan. So the first step then is to compare whatever's being proposed here including the dollars, you know, whatever the budget is, from your software vendor and compare it to some of these metrics. If you're somewhere in the general ballpark, you might be relatively close, but I'd venture to say that whatever proposal you're looking at is probably a lot lower what you're getting proposed here versus what the average metric shows. And so what I wanna do next is talk about what are some of the missing components that influence how long and how much money it's really gonna to take to implement your digital transformation. So we've got our proposal here from our software vendor. They've given us a duration, they've given us a budget, they've given us some tasks within the plan. 
Now we ask ourselves, why would this number be so understated? And why are these numbers so much more likely to be higher than these numbers? Well, there's a few reasons for that. It's because there's a lot of things missing from the software vendor's proposed plan. Keep in mind that a software vendor's proposed plan is for one piece of an overall program or one piece of an overall digital transformation. And by the way, it's the other pieces that aren't in the purview of the software vendor that typically drive the most time and cost and heartburn during transformation. But the problem is most organizations don't realize it until they get into the project, then they end up wondering why this timeline doesn't ever materialize or they don't ever get close to this. It's because there's a lot of stuff that fits in the cracks here or that should fit in the cracks that pushes things out. Now, the key to this too, by the way, before I get into what some of those missing components are, is that the sooner you address these things and the more you plan to invest in these additional activities, the less time it's gonna take you. And that's the irony of it all. If you wait until you're halfway or two thirds of through the project and then realize, oh wait, I need to invest in activities A, B, and C because it's not in our plan here, by then you've created some massive delays of your project already because you should have been doing those things early on. So what are those things? I'll talk about them right here. One is business process improvement. So I'm gonna represent this by showing you the strain it has on a project plan. So your business process improvement generally is gonna extend beyond this here. You generally, process improvement is gonna push things out quite a bit because what happens is when you get to this phase, when the software vendor and the system integrator come in to define your requirements and start designing software, they need answers right away. They need to know how do you want the software to work and we're gonna build it for you. And yes, there's some limitations based on how the software works, but today's ERP software and digital technologies are so flexible that there's a million different ways you can run your business using the same software. So we need to have a good vision of what our business processes are. If we don't, then what ends up happening is this stage right here ends up getting extended. It takes a lot longer to do this now because we don't have a vision of what we wanna be when we grow up, so therefore this delays the project. Or if for some reason it doesn't delay the project, and this is potentially even worse, is it doesn't delay the project, but they end up just building the software the way they're most comfortable that doesn't fit with your business, which may not delay the project here, but down here, you're gonna run into massive delays because it wasn't built in a way that supports your business and its objectives. Another thing that can push out a project significantly and should be factored into a realistic implementation plan is organizational change management. That's something else that's typically on the critical path. This activity, business process, I would say, is somewhat on the critical path, but I'd say it's more of a prerequisite to this phase right here. So a way to view business process would be that this activity should actually be happening right here. And that might extend your duration by say three months. And you've got your 18 months here, but it's gonna take you three months before you ever start these 18 months to get your business processes figured out. Especially if you're trying to standardize your operations, you're trying to act like one company, you wanna consolidate, have unified end-to-end -end business processes. You need to take the time to define that up front so that you speed things up here. If you don't take that, say, three months right here to do that, everything gets pushed back. It's sort of like a domino effect that creates even bigger delays. So you're investing a little bit of time and money up here to save a lot more time and money over here. Change management is very similar, although change management is typically happening in parallel. If we wait until right here to do change management, we are almost certainly going to extend the go live significantly because we've had resistance building all along the way We've had change management issues. We may not see or feel it yet until we get to training, but it has absolutely been developing and percolating. So if we wait until here, it's gonna delay the project even more. But having said that, we want this parallel activity to be starting as early as possible, probably here during the business process phase, the pre-implementation phase, and continuing throughout implementation. And then one more I'll share with you is, I'll call it the non-software technical work stream. And what this is, is this is gonna be things like your data mapping, data migration, your architecture, how the different modules, different systems tie together, how we're gonna integrate different systems. That all needs to have a very clear plan and vision that starts up here before you ever start designing and building and testing. Reason for that is because in parallel with this, you're gonna to have to be doing a lot of those activities to make sure you're cleaning up data, mapping data, you're building the integrations, you're testing the integration when you get to the test phase. You're doing a number of those different things that are maybe outside the scope of a single ERP or a single software, but it's very relevant to an overall digital transformation. 
So the reason I point out these missing components is because these things put strains on the overall duration, especially when we don't do them at the right time or place and we don't invest the right resources and money in those activities. I already talked about how what happens with business process and some of the tech work streams, if you don't do that work up front, and if you don't start your change management work up front, yes, you might spend a little bit more time up front before you ever start the clock running on the 18 months here. But if you don't do that, it's probably gonna extend it by a lot more than three months in that example of taking the three months up front. So these are just a few examples of how those strains happen. So now what we need to do is figure out how do we get a realistic plan now based on everything I've just mapped out here. So the next step now is we need to take this proposal that we get from the software vendor or vendors. Now we need to wrap in all this other stuff. So we need an overall program plan, not just a project plan for one work stream, but a program plan that includes all this stuff. And generally where we start, rather than trying to guess what all this is gonna be, when we don't really know at the point you've made a decision around what technology you're deploying, we don't really know how long this is gonna take. Yes, we've got benchmarks here. Yes, we can make some initial assumptions or guesses around whether or not this is realistic, we don't really know. So how do we know? How do we find out what a realistic plan is? Well, the first thing I'd say is this phase right here, I'm out of room here, but this phase, we'll call it the pre-implementation planning. Pre-implementation planning is the most important phase to accurately determine how long the rest of this is gonna take. And generally, for most of our mid-sized to larger organizations, this is a three to six month process of doing all the stuff I mentioned here, defining your future state target operating model, your future state organizational design, doing some initial change impact, doing an organizational readiness assessment, creating a technology roadmap in terms of how different technologies are going to fit together, how they're going to integrate, how the data is going to migrate, how systems are going to be decommissioned, how and when are we going to decommission systems, what are we going to do in the interim while we decommission certain systems and start to bring on new systems, do we build interim interface points? All that stuff you've got to have figured out and no answers to before you can really determine what this is going to be. So the time and money you spend up here during pre-implementation planning is absolutely going to give you a lot more clarity and confidence in this plan. And then once you do that, then you can start to really map this out and say, OK, yes, the vendor thinks it's going to be 18 months. But based on what we know about how much we're changing our processes and how big of a change it is to our organization, how complex we are as an organization, the way we've staffed the project and the available resources internally, that gives us some variables that we can use to flex this up or down in terms of duration and cost. So this is where you start to take some of the science and convert it into art or to augment and add in art to how long a project is going to take. And you start to work through some of those different variables that can give you a better accurate representation of what the implementation time, cost, and resource commitments are going to be. This phase two, also during the implementation planning, also gives you a better idea of what the risks are. So now you can start to get your handle on what the risks are and how we're gonna mitigate those risks and really start to attack those risks from a risk mitigation perspective. So these are just some ways to figure out how you can convert a proposed implementation plan that might be completely inaccurate, somewhat of a guess, and overly optimistic into one that's more realistic and more suited for you as an organization. Now for more benchmarks and best practices to help you with your implementation planning process, I encourage you to download our digital transformation report. It's an annual report we publish each year that provides a number of implementation benchmarks to help you understand what some of the other organizations are going through within their digital transformations. And it gives you some good data points to help you in your implementation planning process. And as always, if you ever wanna brainstorm ideas related to your implementation plan and how it might apply to your organization, feel free to reach out. I'd happy to be a sounding board for you. I've included my email address below that you can reach out uh, to contact me to set up a time to brainstorm ideas related to your digital transformation. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. When embarking on a digital transformation, <laughs> they, <laughs> implementation planning and having a, hmm, well, try again, third time's a charm. Creating a technical, uh, what's that word? Uh, creating a technical, oh. <laughs>